how do we reach out beyond the systems engineering source of truth? How do we engage the greater team? Because systems engineering is a collaborative exercise, a transdisciplinary exercise. Your systems engineers will be working inside of Genesis. They will understand the meta model. They will understand the interconnects. They will understand the interface. There are many other people who may need to access that information. For those people, we generally recommend using Excel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch the Excel connector. Now, the Excel connector is a separate plugin. It plugs into Excel. It does not require licensing. It's freely available. It does not require that Genesis be installed on the machine. It simply requires that the machine be able to find the Genesis repository. Now, with the Excel connector installed, I now have a Genesis tab in my Excel ribbon. I select that. I must log in. All information access to Genesis is access controlled. So I'm going to log in. I'm just going to use my administrator admin account. Once I've done that, I have the ability to select projects. This is the list of projects that I have access to. I'm going to select sample fast food. And then the Excel connector allows us to do two things. We can generate some dashboards. What I'm going to focus on is the ability to represent and change information in tabular format. So much of what we do in systems engineering can actually be communicated in tables. So let's click table definition. The best way to understand table definitions is first to run them, look at what you get, and then we'll come back. So in the table definition dropdown, I'm going to select the requirements table. Tables are defined in Excel. They are then stored with the project in Genesis. So what you do is you have a knowledgeable Genesis user define the tables that the various users will need, and then they simply run the tables that they want. When I select requirements, I see over on the right-hand side, it tells me this is the information that we're pulling out. We're pulling out requirements. I can filter, I can sort. New entities, if I add them to this table, will become requirements. And down below, I see the table definition. I'm going to have my number, my name, the type of requirement, the description, and then the parent requirement. If I load, it warns me it's going to overwrite this sheet. That's fine. And it queries Genesis, and then it disconnects from Genesis. So this is not a live connection. It's a query, but it then stores the information behind the scenes so that it knows how to update Genesis. So if I do a little bit of an adjustment here, I can see all my capabilities in Excel are present. I can do several different things. So for example, let's say I'm dealing with a requirements engineer and the requirement engineer says, you know, this requirement is outdated. I'm not gonna go through a change control process. I'm simply going to change the requirement. Uh, I don't like, it just sounds yucky to say I'm serving chicken parts. Let's actually say that we're going to serve chicken nuggets and tenders. And I'm going to parenthetically say grilled and uh, fried. The moment I leave the field, Excel colors this yellow because Genesis knows this value has changed. By the way, from a systems engineering perspective, this now expresses multiple thoughts. I should now actually make this a composite requirement. So drop down lists in Genesis become drop down cells here. You can't violate. And I said we can use the Excel connector not only to view data and change data, but I can create new data. So for example, I might now decompose this requirement by typing a new row. And I'm going to serve uh, chicken nuggets. That's going to be a functional requirement. And I'm actually going to copy this text down, paste it, and just delete that text off at the end. Now, I can't set the parent requirement. How do I know that? If I look in my title bar, I will see a red triangle indicating a comment. The columns that are updatable will tell you that they're updatable. Column F is not. 
The reason it's not is when it was output, it was output with the number and the name. So Genesis wouldn't really know how to resolve that. That's okay, we could change that back in Genesis. So I'm gonna serve chicken nuggets. I'm just gonna enter one more and I'm gonna say I'm gonna serve uh, fried tenders. I should really do all three of them for expediency, I won't. And again, I can copy this requirement down and edit it. So we shall serve fried chicken tenders. So you can use the Excel connector for somebody to consume, edit, or add data. So now that we've added it, how can we push it back? Well, there are two options. Publish all. If the spreadsheet is actually the authoritative source of truth, for example, if you're dealing with a mass budget and your authoritative source of truth for that mass budget table is a spreadsheet, you would publish all in order to overwrite any changes in Genesis. In this case, the authoritative source of truth is Genesis. We just wanna publish the changed cells back. So if I hit publish changes, it tells me it's going to update, hit okay. And it performs those updates. Eight cells were updated. If I come back into Genesis and I look in my requirement class, I now see my serve chicken parts nuggets, that description has been edited, the type has been changed, I have two children. I can now go ahead and set those relationships that I was talking about. So for example, serve chicken nuggets, I could click old dragon relate, child refines the parent. So I could set those relationships here. Okay, let's go back to the Excel connector and talk about the other fields so that you can use it effectively. If I open a new table definition, let's create a new table definition and let's conceptualize this one as requirements with children. So I'm going to scroll over here in the right pane and say, what do I wanna fundamentally represent? It could be any combination of folders, any classes that I want. I only want requirements, but if I wanted requirements and components, I could do them both. So I check requirement. What filter do I want to apply? I want all of them. I would like them sorted numerically. That gives me a hierarchical type sort. If someone adds a row, what do I want it to be? I want it to be a new requirement. So that completes the top information. The bottom information, the rows in this table correspond to columns. So let's say the first thing that I want is I want an attribute and I'm gonna select the number. Now, what I could do here is I go across, I can give it a header, I can do some other things. We'll talk about based on in a minute. If I come back up to the add button to add another row, let's look at the types of things that I can add. Uh, what class is it? Requirement component function. The entity, this would represent the entity in correspondence with this sort block, okay? Entity attribute, so any attribute value, any of the parameter values that we wanted, objective, threshold, design, observed. What folder is it in? Relationship, in general, the only time you would do relationship is if you were trying to do a relationship target. Most often, sorry, relationship attribute. Most often you want targets, we'll use that later. System property, this would be something like when was it last modified, or just a plain blank column. So. I'm going to output the another into the attribute. I'm gonna make it the name. So I can scroll down, select name. There we go. Let me add a third. Now let's ask for the children. So the children is going to be a relationship, but specifically, I don't want the relationship. I want the target. I want the entity on the other side of the relationship. I ask what relationship I wanna follow. I want the refined by, a parent is refined by the children. So refined by targets, that's a little Greek to other people. So I will just say child requirements, give them a label they will understand. How do I want those sorted? Uh, I'm gonna make those numeric. If somebody adds a new target, what class do you want it to be in? I would want it to be in the requirement class. Okay, single cell, if I check this box and let's say I have three children, 
they will all be in one Excel cell. That's fine if I'm going for a compact notation. If I want more information about this child, I need to leave this unchecked. Let's leave it unchecked and let's add one more row. So I'm going to add an entity attribute one more time. I'm going to add a description, but I don't want a description of my main requirement. I want a description of that child requirement. So here in data, I can do the drop down and I can say, give me the description of the entity that came out of three. This is good enough for our purposes. I'm going to save as, and I'm going to label it requirements with children. Hit OK. It tells us it's saved. It's available in the project for anybody to use. I can load. And this time I'm going to see, here's my requirement number, my requirement name, if there are any children requirements, they show up on separate rows because I did not check the single cell box. And I have the description, the child description corresponding to this entity. You don't have to limit yourself to requirements. You can use you know, tables as complex as you want. If I run one more just to make a point, I'm gonna grab the requirement flow down, which gives us the requirements and how it traces into design. So you could think of requirements flowing to functions, functions being allocated on the components, components talking about their exchanges. You can go as far down as you wish. These can be arbitrarily complex.